Salve te omnes. If you'd like to support the channel along with these patrons, I'd really appreciate the support. There's a link in the description box below. Today I'd like to introduce a few really good resources for furthering your study of Latin beyond the videos on this channel. These are three books that are completely in Latin, but they are written for beginners, so if you're following the lessons here, you should be able to start reading them. The first is Carolus et Maria, the second is Lingua Latina per se illustrata, and the third, Julia. Carolus et Maria and Lingua Latina start out a little easier than Julia and contain more pictures, so I would recommend starting with one of these before Julia. We'll take a look at Carolus et Maria first, since it seems a little easier. Here's a page from the book. As you can see, this book will help you reinforce all the words you learned in the lessons, as this passage contains almost all familiar words that we have gone through. And for any words that you don't know or don't remember, there is a Latin to English dictionary at the end of the book. Additionally, this passage contains great example sentences demonstrating the Latin cases, like Haec femina est mater pueri et puellae. Do you know what declination pueri and puellae are in? Genitive, which is the possessive case. So this means, this woman is the boy's and girl's mother. And in the second paragraph, there are many instances of the accusative case, which is obvious by all the words ending in M. All of these books get progressively more difficult. As you can see here, the tenth chapter is significantly harder than the second chapter, which we just looked at. There are many words that we haven't seen yet, although some you might be able to guess, like stellae. And in the second sentence, we have the word widentur, which is the passive form of wident. Because these books become difficult kind of fast, it might be best to read more than just one. Let's take a look at lingua latina now. I prefer this book because it takes place in ancient Rome, at the time that Latin was spoken. So not only will you learn Latin from reading this, but you also learn about ancient Roman culture and daily life. One disadvantage that this book has is that there is no dictionary or definitions of words. But maybe this is because the author wanted it to be more universal, and not just aimed at English speakers. As we'll see from this passage though, you can guess some of the words from context, or from the pictures. For example, you can probably guess that skyna prima means first scene. And from the picture on the side, we know that Marcus Julian Pulsat means something like Marcus hit or punched Julia. But it's harder to guess what the word laitus means. Reading the first lines of the passage, can you guess what this word means? Happy or cheerful? Kind of hard. But maybe you can guess what Julia cantat and Marcus read it mean when you look at the quote that follows each phrase. The first is sings and the second laughs. The author also tries to explain Latin grammar completely in Latin. And honestly, I don't know how a beginner is supposed to understand these explanations unless they already speak a language that uses cases. Additionally, by the time you reach the grammar explanations, you would have already needed to understand the concept in order to read the previous story. But if you're following the lessons on this channel, you won't face any of these problems and can just read these sections for more Latin practice. As you can see here though, the author does a really good job introducing many new concepts in a way that can be understood from context. Just from reading the first two sentences and looking at the pictures on the side, we can figure out that in qua means in which or where, and the quius means whose. So these first sentences mean, Behold the Roman store, where there are gems and pearls. Whose is this store? It's Albinus's. You see, Albini is the genitive form. 
But as we can see in the final paragraph here, there will always be words that we can't figure out from context or the pictures. So in order to read this book, you will need a dictionary. A really good online one is Wiktionary because it is filled with information but well organized. There is sometimes an audio recording for the pronunciation as you can see here, and always a declination table for nouns and adjectives, or a conjugation table for verbs. Often there are even example sentences to help you see other ways the word is used. Another helpful thing is that there is usually an etymology section and a descendants section, as you can see here for the verb canto. These can sometimes help you associate the new word with one you already know in a different language or make some kind of connection. And the other advantage is that Wiktionary is also available in a variety of languages, not just English, although it appears that there are less entries for some languages. Another good dictionary is latinissimple.com because here not only can you look up individual words, but you can enter entire phrases which will be broken down. Here I entered est mater pueri et puellae, and the program shows which declination each word is in. However, because there is overlap in the Latin cases, there will sometimes be more than one declination listed, as there is here but it can be useful when you just can't figure out a sentence. I'll leave links to both these dictionaries in the description box below. Back to the books. The first two books we looked at each follow the story of a family, while Yulia contains separate stories, as we can see from the table of contents here. Some of these are Greek and Roman myths, while others seem to be new stories written by the author. Although you might be able to understand this first page, there are many words that have not yet been covered in the videos. And as you can see here, even just the fifth chapter gets significantly harder, so it's better to wait to tackle this book until after you have read one of the other two. But this does also have some interesting stories, and the additional vocabulary will be useful if you're interested in taking on native content. If you have gone through about the first 20 lessons, you should be able to read the first four chapters of Lingua Latina and the first nine chapters of Paulus et Maria with no problem. There will, of course, be a few words that you will either have to guess or look up in the dictionary, but hopefully the stories will be interesting enough to keep you motivated to continue. I will also try to cover more of the vocabulary used in these books in further lessons, so stay tuned! Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and if you can, help support the channel on Patreon, where there are audio downloads and transcripts of each dialogue and story. Gratias!